Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. So in the previous videos, we saw that the data that we collect can be split into ratio 6 is to 4 or any other ratio depending upon the use case and domain of the problem that you are dealing with. So let us understand in this video how we can collect our data so we can apply machine learning algorithms on them and perform various analysis on them to build performant machine learning models. Now there are various websites you can collect your data from to train the machine learning models. One such website is the UCI machine learning repository. So we are on their website now. Here you can see we have a large collection of data sets to work with and you can create your own machine learning models using Python by working with that data. Also if you require some government data for analysis, you can get that from some of their websites where this data is available publicly. For private data, you can request them clearly highlighting the scope and nature of your analysis and if the request gets approved, they might provide you with the data. So let us understand the splitting in case of the data set that is given to us. So I'm back in my whiteboard. So let us understand splitting in data set. So as we know that Suppose this is our complete data set, okay? And suppose these are six parts or maybe eight or six is to four or eight is to two, okay? So suppose we are splitting the data set in the ratio of six is to four, okay? So we will get six parts here, three, four, five and six. And this, let this be two. So. So these two parts can be used for testing the data set. Okay, four, yeah, six is to four. So I'm considering six is to four as of now, okay? So these four parts are for your testing and these six parts are for your training data set. So training data set. Now let us understand these terminologies before we proceed further. Now training data set is used for fitting of the model, okay? It's the one that is continuously seen by the model. It is the last subset of your data set as you can see. In most of the cases, it is six by 10 of your data set. So six parts are for your training data set and four parts can be for your testing data set, okay? If you are splitting the data set in the ratio six is to four, we can also split the data set in any other ratio depending on the use case of the problem. Okay. So let us proceed further. So as I told you, it's the last subset of your data set. When we are trying to teach the model, once the model has seen the data you can use, the same data uh, cannot be used again to evaluate the performance of the model. Okay. The reason for that is that the model is well aware of the environment in which it was trained on and hence testing the model on the same subset on which it was trained on will give you a false impression of the performance of the model which will definitely will not be correct. Now in order to tackle this you'll have to give it some other data set or deploy it in some other environment to estimate its true statistical power of prediction. So statistical power of prediction okay so to estimate the true statistical power of prediction we have to basically check the performance of the model in an environment unlike the one it was trained on to know how effectively the model learned from the training data let us understand this by an example now when teacher uh, teaches you a subject and you practice together with the teacher on a continuous and consistent basis, solving problems under the supervision of a teacher or by your own, you get trained on the material that is provided by the teacher for learning purpose. Okay. So suppose the teacher has provided you with some learning material and all the learnings that you have gathered from the teacher under the supervision or by unsupervised learning so you are learning on your own okay so this training this training material 
is basically developing statistical power of prediction in you this thing okay that is you mimic like a machine learning model which is well trained but again not tested or validated okay now you need to be tested whether you have learned the material successfully or not now once the test is conducted by the teacher to evaluate your performance the teacher is not going to give you the same questions on which you were trained on so now the teacher is going to provide you another set of questions so these are say some questions that are given to you and this is a relatively new collection of questions in the test which will be based on the concept that you had learned while training and now it is up to you to prove your performance so if you are able to perform well in the test then the teacher can conclude that you did well in other words this means that if the trained machine learning model is able to prove its statistical power of prediction and accuracy in an environment that is unlike the one it was trained on then you can see that the machine learning model performs well and it is a very good machine learning model and this process of improvement of the performance so we will be improving so these iterations of performing or improving the performance so it's a gradual process it will keep on happening so you will have to improve the performance of your machine learning model on a continuous basis until you get a model which can perform to the best optimal by best optimal i mean the performance of the model is tending to 100% but it can never be 100% as you will see because there will always be some error element in your machine learning model which we will see when we discuss about different types of errors that we can encounter now let us understand about test data set so this was first we covered the training data set now second one is the testing data set okay now the testing data set as i already told you is used for the completed model evaluation to check how well it is performing in an environment that is unlike the one it was trained on so it gives us the total unbiased evaluation of the performance of your machine learning model let me write this down so total unbiased evaluation of your machine learning model okay focus on the word unbiased okay so it gives you the total unbiased evaluation of the performance of your machine learning model it is not going to do any biasing so the third one is the validation data set okay so you can uh, basically take one part of your training data set and you can use it as something called as validation data set though it is not mandatory but in some cases you may require the need for a validation data set now what is validation data set you may go for some portion of your actual data set as the validation data set though it is not always the case it depends on the use case again the validation data set provides again the very same thing which is total unbiased evaluation of your machine learning model but there is a difference okay after every successful training of the model that you do this data set can be used now this means that this data set will not give you the ready model straight away because it may require multiple rounds of iteration to reach to a stage to give you a fully ready trained model to work in so this is all about the validation data set and after every small change that you make you can check how your model looks like so this was all about the splitting in case of data set and where you can collect your data to make your machine learning models so let's catch up in the next video